Hi, it's time for a chime video. So today we have two examples of really nice early new tone two note door chimes. Both of these models are late 30s models and most likely they're from 1938, 1939, could possibly be 1940, but they are definitely pre-war chimes and these are good examples of some of the earliest styles of chimes that Newtone made. Having two examples and looking at and comparing them, we can learn a little bit about what Newtone maybe was thinking and how they manufactured things in those days. To go along with this one, we actually have a magazine ad which features this exact chime. Well, not this exact one, but this model. So this one was called the Kitchen Air. And it says, the clever little model for kitchens or dining nooks of ivory or white enamel with chromium bands and a panel design. Let's say in 1939, this chime would have cost you $3.95. Let's look at what it is compared to how they describe it. Let's put this one off to the side for a minute and we'll take a look at this one. Now this one, while it's not in bad shape, somebody over the years has decided that they needed to paint it gold, which is unfortunate, but I think it's probably restorable. And if we turn it around and look at the back, we get a good idea of what the original color probably was, along with the resonator tubes, which are most likely the original color. And I would guess that this was probably more white than ivory, but it's really hard to say. They talk about the panel design, that's this section right here. And here in the middle of the panel, you have this plaque, and it says Newtone on it, which was good marketing. They wanted you to know it was a Newtone chime. And as for the chromium bands, that's these bands here on the covers. And here you can maybe see some of the gold paint has worn away. And you can see it's shiny like chrome, or perhaps it's more like nickel back in those days. If we turn it over, you can see how the bands are held in place. They have these little bent over tabs. And so it would have been inserted into the cover and then they would bend the tabs over to hold them in place. It's a nice design. Same thing with the Newtone plaque here in the middle of the panel. It's held on with little bent over tabs also. And then you have this sort of panel here which fits between the resonators, I imagine. So if you look up from the bottom of the chime, you don't see the mechanism inside. You also have some vent holes in the top. They're vent holes to let the sound out because I guess that probably enhanced the way it was sounding. And you have some little posts here which fits into holes in the base right here. This close up of the base, you can see we have two solenoid assemblies. So this is a two note front and rear door chime. The front door would be the bottom plunger and you get two notes, both ding and dong. And then the second door, the rear door, would be a single note. It has this stop right here that prevents the plunger from hitting the second tone bar. I doubt that the base was painted gold when it was new. It was most likely black. It's a fairly simple design. It's a stamped metal base. Here it says New Tone. It says Chime Door Signal, New Tone Chime Incorporated Cincinnati, Ohio. And we just have three terminal connections here. We have a transformer connection and then a front door connection and a rear door connection and these are sort of those knurled nut binding posts that used to be so so common i remember when i was a kid growing up we i had a lionel train and these were the same kind of terminals that they had on the transformer so common part back in those days and then we have our two tone bars the tone bars are supported by these metal standoffs and then there are grommets or the remains of grommets and then the end of the tab is bent over to hold it in place. And I would assume it was done that way because it would be quick to assemble. And then the tone bar goes down into the resonator tube here and you have an opening here to help let the sound out. And they're actually in the cap of the resonating tube down in here where it's hard to see, there's a tab and it has a, the remains of a grommet on another tab. So these are, the grommets of course are in really bad shape and the tone bars mostly flop around more than being supported by the grommets. Of course, for as old as it is, the plungers, that one actually moves pretty freely. This other one, pretty, pretty 
rough. You, when you push it, you can feel it scrape on the inside of the solenoid. So at some point, someone may have replaced the tips on the plungers. These are wooden tips, and I'm not certain whether wood was the standard material for the plunger tips back in those days. It may very well have been, since both of the tips look very similar in the type of material, and it would be kind of doubtful that somebody would have replaced all three of them with wood. So those perhaps are actually original, which is kind of cool. This was a moderately priced chime, not the least expensive chime that they made back in those days. Back in the late 30s, you could actually buy a new tone door chime for as little as $1.95. Take a look at our second new tone chime. You'll see that it's very similar to the first one. Actually, the covers are basically the same. They're the same shape, they're finished differently, and they have a little bit of a different motif to them. So here we have a finish. It's sort of a hammered, bronzy kind of finish. I don't know exactly what it would have looked like when it was brand new, but it, it, this chime is a much more formal looking chime than the Kitchen Air. And I would imagine that this chime probably cost more than the Kitchen Air did. We have this sort of hammered, bronzy kind of finish. You'll notice that we have the grooves here in the cover, like the Kitchen Air, but there's no panels inserted into them. They're just left open like this. Here in the center on the panel, we have this nice Torch of Life motif. Torch of Life motifs were very popular in the 19th century, and it's symbolic to light the way to provide hope and optimism and those kind of things. If we take the cover off, we'll see that there are no slots in the top, and I think I know why that may be. And if we look on the inside, we have this sort of nice bronzy brown color, which I imagine would be very similar to what the outside looked look, look like when it was brand new. This may be mostly dirty, or it may just have discolored from being exposed to light and things since 1939. We put that aside, and we look at the back of the chime. We'll see it's very similar to the kitchen. Here, looking at the base assembly, you can see the base is painted black. So that's why I would assume the Kitchen Air's base would have been black also, because I'm pretty sure that Newtone would have streamlined their manufacturing and they came up with a base assembly that could be used on multiple different chimes and that would cut costs and cut the number of items you had to have in inventory to build a chime. And so most likely the other one was black also. We have the same three binding posts here. We have basically the same sort of solenoid assembly. However, on this one, there seems to be the spring on the front door solenoid seems to be a two-piece spring instead of a single-piece spring. I'm not sure why that would be exactly but it does look to be original because the spring is wound in a way that it clips into the slot in the plunger. Now this may not be original. I don't know because I haven't seen enough of these. And you would think that if they were gonna streamline their production and their manufacturing, that the solenoid assemblies would be the same for all of these basic types of chimes. But we don't really know that, so we won't be able to tell until maybe we get it working again. Here we have this nice paper label. Oh, no, it's not paper. It's like silk screened or stamped on there. It says New Tone Door Chime Signal, New Tone Chimes Incorporated, Cincinnati, Ohio. And up here, we have a patent number. And if we get the magnifier out, we might be able to read it. It says patented United States, patent number 2113911. So that would be 2113911. Nine hundred and eleven. Perhaps we can do a patent search and we could find the patent for this chime and see what that's all about because it would have some interesting drawings as to how it was assembled and, and, and the description of what it was supposed to do. If we turn it over on the side, we have tone bars on either side and these tone bars have a brass finish. Now whether they're actually brass or whether they're a steel tone bar with a brass finish, I'm not sure. I would bet on a steel tone bar with a brass finish because one of the things you'll notice that's different about this chime is how the tone bars and the resonators are assembled. On this model, the tone bars are still held onto the base assembly on the metal standoffs and they're 
are the remains of what grommets there were. However, this time, instead of the tone bars going down the center of the resonators, they're actually mounted to the outside of them. And down here, there's a somewhat decorative nut, and there's a threaded post with the grommet, and it holds the tone bar on the outside of the resonator, and there still is a hole on the outside of the resonator tube to help amplify the sound, because that's what these are really for. And of course, in this model, the tubes are not painted. They're actually, they're probably solid brass tubes. So this is a much more showy chime, and I would imagine that this would be in an entryway or a living room or someplace where you would put it up and show it off when people came over. And if we want to get a little bit of an idea of what the tubes looked like when they were new, we'll take a little bit of our Brasso, which is the only thing you should use to clean brass tubes with, and we'll put a little bit on a rag, and we'll give it a little rub here. These tubes are pretty dirty. And you might assume that, well, they were always dark, But I don't think that was the case. And you can see that they are fairly dirty. I'm not sure. I had somebody ask me recently. She was polishing the tubes of her new tone chime. And she said, I polish and polish and polish and polish. And while they look better and better all the time, it seems like the rag still gets dirty even when there doesn't seem to be any tarnish left. Why is that? And I said, well, I don't know exactly. But I have a feeling that the brass will always give you tarnish when you clean it. And it's never truly clean. There's always some residue. And it could also be just the reaction of the Brasso and the brass. So we'll just do that much for now. I think that gives you an idea, especially if you go back and look at what it looked like before I started, a little bit of an idea of what the resonators would have looked like when they were brand new in 1939 compared to what they look like today. And I also think that if you put your cover back in place, which may be somewhat dirty, and perhaps our torch of life was shiny also, to help contrast against the dark cover and the shiny brass tubes. This would have been a fairly showy chime when it was brand new, don't you think? There you have it, two late 1930s new tone two note door chimes. So the question at this point is, what am I gonna do with these? That's something I get asked a lot sometimes at the office. And I think both of these deserve to be restored or renewed back to a working condition again. The Kitchen Air seems like a nice idea and I would really like to see what it will look like in, an, in its white color with the chromium bands and the new tone plaque in the middle. But I have to deal with the problem with the gold paint. So I think what we'll have to do with this one is this has to go to a friend of mine who does custom motorcycle painting. And I'm pretty sure that he can get rid of the chrome paint and we'll disassemble it and we'll clean it all up and he can respray it to either match the tubes or perhaps we'll do the tubes along with the cover so it all matches and it looks like new. It's always a hard decision to make because nowadays a lot of people don't want things that are fully restored. They sort of want it to be more original. We'll probably never find an original white cover in good condition and the tubes are a little scratched up and a little dirty. Probably painting it all to match the original color would be the way to go, and my friend can do that easily for me, so that would be cool. The mechanism itself is pretty straightforward and shouldn't be too terribly difficult to deal with, so I'm not worried about that at all. This one, since it's a showier chime, and since I've already invested a couple minutes in polishing one of the brass tubes, I think this is the one I'll probably do first. I think both of these chimes deserve to be renewed back to working condition because I don't know about you, but I'd like to hear what a 1939 new tone two note door chime actually sounds like because I've never seen one of these working in anybody's house before. Out here where we are, you don't see chimes like this that often. Every now and then, mostly say in San Francisco or Oakland where the houses are older, I'd like to hear what these sound like. So I think my upcoming project, which will be featured on another video, will be 
the restoration of the working components of this one and then I'll clean this one up cosmetically. I have to decide what to do with the torch of life. So you can let me know what you think. Do you think this was probably shinier when it was new? Is it really brass or is it maybe just brass plated or should I just leave it like it is and let it show its age? The tubes will have to be polished because I've already started doing that. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.